Hello there and welcome. This is Guardian Sports on Guardian TV. My name is Solomon Fowowe and we're already in the round of 16 of the 2019 African Cup of Nations. There are going to be matches today. That's Morocco against Benin Republic while Senegal faces off against Uganda. Tomorrow, Nigeria plays against Cameroon while Egypt plays against South Africa. Yes, we're going to be giving you some things from that game, especially the game coming from Alexandria. That's Nigeria against Cameroon. Uh, Dennis Arez is here with me and we're going to be discussing, uh, looking and previewing that game between Nigeria and Cameroon. How's it going, Dennis? Uh, it's very well, Solomon. Uh, very good. Uh, so, what do you expect? What do we expect from the game between Cameroon and Nigeria? Because you know they're both rivals coming into this game. Cameroon are the defending champions. So, what is it to expect from that game? I expect a fight. I expect a battle mm -hmm. between these two teams because you look at the African continent and then you cannot count about 20 or 10 teams that stands out with the tag of a big team but when you talk about Cameroon you talk about Nigeria you're talking about the big boys in African football yeah, yeah. and I expect nothing less but a battle yeah it's gonna be a battle but to look at these things more holistically we're gonna be taking a peek at how Cameroon did in their group stages the first game was against Guinea-Bissau where the one two goals to nil the second game was against um that was Ghana where it was a goalless draw while the third game that would have seen them um, finished top of the group was Cameroon against the Benin Republic which ended goalless. Also looking at Nigeria's group uh, the first match was against Burundi where we won one goal to nil. The second game was against Guinea where we won two goals to nil and the final game which was quite a huge disappointment was two goals to nil where we lost to Madagascar. So, so looking at both sides what would you say it's the insight that you've gotten from watching the two teams? Solomon considering the two teams you want to uh, say that the Indobi table lions of Cameroon and the Super Eagles of Nigeria have been a bit inconsistent in this tournament because the Super Eagles of Nigeria won their first game by a lone margin, won the second game with a lone goal as well, and then the third game they fell so low against Madagascar. The same and then a similar case for the Indomitable Lions of Cameroon. Yes, you want to make a case for them that they have been so they have been unbeaten in mm -hmm. this tournament. But the difference I see in there is that the Cameroonians are much more solid in the defense more than the Super Eagles of Nigeria because clearly they are yet to concede a goal in the same way they are yet to lose a game. So your thoughts there by Dennis? Well, both teams, they've shown that um, at the time when they needed it the most, they fell short in that final game against Benin Republic for Cameroon where they were meant to finish top of the group and in that game against Madagascar where Nigeria just needed a draw. Both teams are going to be facing off at Alexandria as, uh, as you know. Well, you've talked about the strength of Cameroon which is their defense, but what about the strength of the Nigerian side? What do you consider as their strength? Number one thing that is the strength of the Super Eagles of Nigeria, which I think lacks so much in the squad of the Indomitable Lions of Cameroon, mm. is the technicality that Nigeria has in its squad. Mm -hmm. Because you look at the midfield, we have NDD, we have Alexi Wobe, we have players that can really run at defenders and then, you know, put a defense on its tools. Like we know that Cameroon has a solid defense. But in reflex, you look at the Cameroonian team, the only thing I think they have going forward for them is their physicality like you have always known for every Cameroonian team. Well, there's that, the physicality, and also, uh, I think you're forgetting this guy, Christian Basogog, who is really, really good when it comes to uh, movement on the ball, and Clinton Ngi, also a forward for Cameroon, but you've talked about what you consider the strengths of Nigeria, so would you say the defense is a weakness for Nigeria, seeing the way they were flat-footed against Madagascar, and there was a howler by Leon Balogo in that game? It is not just the defense of the Super Eagles of Nigeria that is a challenge, but then I think a challenge that has been evident so far in the tournament is creating a link up between from the midfield to the attack like we have seen so far in the tournament that Alexi Wobi have really struggled to hold his own in the matches that he has featured for for the Super Eagles of Nigeria as well as Mikel Obi when he played in the number 10 role so I see a challenge in the midfield of Nigeria and also in the defense but I think that going forward Ganetro should have pointed their attention to these uh, flaws and then I expect to see a development. Okay, so do you think the Cameroonian midfield is, is creative enough for it to um, trouble the midfield of the Super Eagles or the defense of the Super Eagles? You're talking about players like Zambu and Guiza, you're talking about Manjek and probably, probably Chupomotin playing at the tip of the, of the midfield. Do you think that is creative enough to um, provide a whole lot of chances for Cameroon? Now, in terms of creativity, you look at uh, the players that are the likes of Chipomoting for uh, the Cameroonian national team 
and then you want to put them side by side with the creative players that the Super Eagles of Nigeria possesses. I think Nigeria has an edge in this area, but the question is if they can be able to maximize it. And then a lot of people watching us home might be uh, thinking within themselves that if Nigeria could not maximize its potential against Madagascar, how will it do the same against a uh, Cameroon team that are touted as one of the giants of African football? Well, you spoke about the attack for Nigeria as a strength. But some will back to defer thinking that they currently have a scoring problem. Uh, they've scored just two goals in this game and uh, they came in the second half of those, of those matches. While the third um, match where they were meant to get a couple of goals, they still didn't. And Igalo was starting that match. So what do you think Gerard Ross should be doing differently heading into the game against Cameroon? Knowing that he's going to be facing a strong defence and also a remarkable goalkeeper in Andre Onana. Yes, I do admit that the Super Eagles of Nigeria has a goal scoring problem. But I do not see it as a goal scoring problem. Rather, I see it as a problem, you know, when the players up front for Nigeria are not really linking up in their the various departments mm. to produce a goal for the Super Eagles of Nigeria. But in the match against Cameroon, I, I would just uh, sit back and imagine and then think of it that, you know, the Super Eagles of Nigeria really hold their own. If you have a player like Ahmed Musa on the left, you have Chukweze or Simon Moses on the right, you know, run at these defenders. And in the same way, you have a good link up play from the midfield with the likes of Alexi Wobi, you know, uh, the likes of, you have the likes of John Ogu and uh, Wilfred Ndidi, you know, do a clean mop up play in, in the midfield and then connecting to the attack. I think there will be goals. That's interesting that you touched on those parts because I was just about asking you what would be your preferred 11 starting that game against Cameroon. Is it going to be the pairing of Leon Balogo and William Tristekon in defense or you're going to be putting in um, Kenneth Omero in that game? So let me just get your thoughts on your preferred starting 11. I would prefer Daniel Akwe to start in goal and mm. then I expect the pairing of Leon Balogo and Kenneth Omero. I think their performance was uh, quite top notch in the match against Guinea. So uh, on the right side of the defense, I would expect uh, Chigozie Awazim to start there, mm -hmm. you know, knowing that uh, Shewa Bula is currently injured. It's, uh, and then I expect Ola you know, to start in the, uh, the left back okay. position. And then in the midfield, I expect to see Ogene Karo Etebo, uh, Wilfred Ndidi, Alexi will be to do the uh, free roll thing. I expect Ahmed Musa to start on the on the left uh, left wing, and then I expect Samuel Chukweze on the right and Odion Igalo in front. That's in a 4-3-3 formation. So interesting there because um, there's no John Obimikel featuring in your side. Uh, there's no John Ogu, and there is no William Trust Ekong starting in that game but but in that your preferred 11 but that's that's all good uh, now i'm going to put you on the spot what do you think is going to be the result what are you predicting as a result between nigeria and cameroon <laughs> now uh, now putting me on the spot is right now is uh, one of the greatest tests i feel anyone can face right now in a match that has uh, nigeria versus uh, the indomitable lions of cameroon but uh, to be on the safer side, I'm not expecting a match with a goal margin like 2-0 or 3-0. But maybe we could have uh, like a 2-1 or a 3-2. And perhaps going to penalties because I'm aware that the last training session that the Super Eagles of Nigeria had, you know, Ganetra had to take these players on penalty taking. So that's telling us that, you know, Ganetra might be looking at or penalty shootout as the last resort. Well, smart one by the coach there, taking the team through penalty drills because he knows this Cameroonian side, a very, very defensive side, and it's also the knockout stages. So, Nigeria's faced Cameroon six times in the Afghan, and this is going to be the seventh time. Cameroon came up winners three times, while Nigeria has won two times, and there was a draw. Um, but this is the seventh time and we hope Nigeria is going to be getting this one yeah so that's it from us at Guardian Sports on Guardian TV make sure you stay updated on everything from the 2019 AFCON by checking out our social media channels that's at Guardian Nigeria and subscribing to our YouTube page uh, thanks for coming Dennis Arezi it's always my pleasure so uh, super uh, so that's our package for today make sure you keep watching Guardian TV